morning. morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Bonnie Grimaldi, and I'm so glad to see you all here this morning. It is Harvest Home and Stewardship Sunday. Our Thanksgiving dinner is today after this service in Fellowship Hall. Starting November 19th, that'll be next Sunday, we will have trees set up in the narthex and in the connecting room for uh, donations of underwear to the Salvation Army. And there are envelopes in the narthex to donate to the T4C Share a Christmas. And we continue to pray for Israel, Palestine, and the Ukraine, that there will be justice, healing, and peace. And now Ron Stahl will say a few words about stewardship. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ron Stahl, and I'm representing the Stewardship Committee this morning. I'd like to take a minute to remind everyone that today is Stewardship Sunday, and a great time for each of us to evaluate our monetary donations to Grace Lutheran Church and keep God's house a priority in our lives. Unfortunately, we cannot do anything to stop expenses from going up. Each of us are aware that utilities and insurance go up every year, as well as payroll to maintain a quality staff that serves this church. Currently, our weekly giving has been supplemented by outside sources. We have been fortunate that the Head Start rent and the Tuscarawas County Community Fund has provided the money that make it necessary to make ends meet at the end of each year. Most of you are aware that the updates we have made to our church, we have replaced our heating and cooling systems and repaired the roof on each side of our sanctuary here. This was made possible because of the generous people that left money to our church to be used for these projects. Unfortunately, these funds are earmarked for either property expenses or scholarships, so we cannot use any of these funds to meet our monthly church expenses. Please keep in mind that our church only thrives when our congregation commits to providing offerings, time, and talent. Let us pray that the next year will be positive and successful, and we can continue to enjoy what we have here at Grace Lutheran Church. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. As we go to our prelude, let us turn our hearts and minds towards worship.
I don't know about you, but my jaw dropped down when they both, the organ and the piano, started playing together. And Jeff did a wonderful job. Thank you. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's creation, God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. 
Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. may be seated for our lessons. The first reading for this Sunday is taken from Amos, fifth chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. It is not the day of the Lord's darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. In the offering and well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like a never-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. We'll read responsibly Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to do deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn my back because of their shame. Let all multitudes rejoice and be glad at you. Let those who love your salvation say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. The second reading for this Sunday is taken from 1 Thessalonians, 4th chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. We do not want to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, 
God will bring with him those who have died. For this is we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we are alive, and we who are left until the coming of the Lord will be in no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command and the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with him, and meet Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. The Gospel according to the 25th chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is a bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. For our children's choir, will the children who are singing in the choir please come up? And we'll have our children's sermon after the choir.
sit down for a children's sermon? Those who want to stay. Okay. Any other children that would like to come for a children's sermon? I'm looking, looking, looking. You're welcome. We got room. Okay. Good morning, children. What do I have here? I'm going to try and sit down right here next. Let's see here. Nora, right next to Nora. Okay. All righty. Um, did someone say what this was? A candle. Well, what do I do with it? You light it. How do I use it, though? I mean, what? Sometimes it smells. Uh, this one doesn't have a, have a nice smell to it. It's hot. OK, you can use it to make heat. A light. Yes, I'm good. It's good. I can carry it around. It's light, small. I can put it in my hand. And I can go in a dark room. And I can see, right? I can use it as a light that I can carry into a dark room. Well, how does it work? Well, this one doesn't have wax. This has oil, but it's the same. Yeah, so it, you fill it with oil, and then you light the wick, and voila, we have a light. Um, what happens if there's no oil? It won't light. So in today's lesson, scripture lesson today, Jesus tells a story about some folks who were waiting in the dark for their friend. And it was a very special day for their friend. He had just gotten married that day. And he was coming home and taking a very long time. And all the folks, they had their lamps lit. And some of the folks fell asleep. Well, they all fell asleep. Some of the lamps went out because they didn't have any more oil. The oil was all gone. So those people went out to find more oil. Guess what happened while they were gone? What? Yeah, the, uh, their friend came home. And, and they left, and they went to a party without them, OK? So they missed it. They missed the party because their oil ran out, and they left to go get more oil. Are we sometimes like? this candle, where we are supposed to carry God's light, right? We are, we were made to carry God's light. And, but sometimes our oil runs out. What does that mean? What? Yeah, we need to get more oil. How do we get more fuel for God's light? What? Go to the gas station. Um, you know, that's a good answer. What about this church? What about we come to this church to get more fuel for God's light? How about that? How about if we read the scriptures and go to Sunday school and you learn and get more fuel? How about getting together like you are right now? And yes, you, you help each other's lights burn brightly. Okay, that's what we do here. Okay, let us pray. Dear God, help us to shine your light of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I am looking to see if there's any children's uh, church today. Okay, you, can, you may go back and sit with your family. All right, thank you. Oh. Do you want anything to eat? I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody's okay? Uh, Skittles? Ha ha, there's some. Okay. There's Skittles and some healthy things in there too. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. All right.
Please pray with me. Dear God, help us face our darkness and shine our light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Where is there light in the world and in your life? And where is there darkness in the world and in your life? Looking into the lamp of your life, what do you see? Is it empty, running low, or full of oil? Is the oil rancid or is it fresh? Is the light shining brightly or is it getting dimmer? Darkness or light, empty or full lamps, rancid or fresh oil are not about what is happening around us, the circumstances of our world and our life, but about what is happening within us. They serve as metaphors for our inner way of being, our spiritual condition. The 10 bridesmaids could easily be divided into two groups, the wise and the foolish, the prepared and the unprepared, the good and the bad, the winners and the losers, the welcomed and the rejected. That's what we do to each other and to ourselves most of the time. But to divide and categorize the 10 bridesmaids is to ignore, misread, or misunderstand today's gospel. Every one of the 10 bridesmaids belong to the kingdom. The wedding banquet was open to all 10 of them. All 10 of them went to meet the bridegroom, and all 10 of them started to feel drowsy and fell asleep. All 10 of them had lamps. All 10 of them were called, meant, and intended to be light carriers. The only distinction between them was whether or not they carried light. That is true for each and every one of us. We're also meant to be light carriers. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel account, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Withholding our light is adding darkness to the world. We either add to the world's light or darkness every day. I can say that because I've seen it in my life. Perhaps you've seen it in yours. My world gets darker when I end relationships, ignore the needs or hopes, concerns of others, or behave as though I don't need them. And a new light starts to shine when I soften my heart, stay open and receptive, and renew my commitment to loving my neighbor and myself. I add to the darkness when I harbor grudges and resentments and nerves past offenses or refuse to give forgiveness. However, when I give mercy, forgiveness, and strive for reconciliation, I allow my light to shine in the world I know I'm living in a dark place when in my marriage or other relationships, I prioritize my needs and desires and act as though I'm sovereign. I put myself at the center. However, when I care for the other, prioritize the other person and treat her or him as though they're important, I add to the world's light. I darken this world when I act, think, or speak with violence, when I disregard the dignity of others, when I act callously 
toward their well-being. However, when I show compassion, strive for justice, and acknowledge each person's dignity, I add to the world's light. I stand in a darkness of my own making when I refuse to see other people's perspectives, believe that my way is the right or only way, and close myself off to new possibilities. However, I start to see the world in a new light with new possibilities when I acknowledge my need of others and let go of competition, comparisons, and judgments and take the risk of not being in control or having all the answers. When you look at your life and the world, what do you see? These days, I see light when I look at my life and the world, and I see darkness when I look at my life and the world. That probably is true for you as well. We are not all darkness or all light. We are a combination of both. On certain days, I add light into the world, and on others, I add darkness. I don't believe the question is whether or not darkness exists in our lives or world. It does. What I'm asking is, what are you doing about it? And what am I doing about it? I betray the gospel of Jesus, myself, and the values to uphold each time I live in that dark place and add darkness to the world. When I do, I have to give a justification for my betrayal. I criticize, blame, and refuse to look at myself. The, the fault lies with someone else. They deserved what they got. I did nothing wrong. And I no longer know myself at that very moment. I'm no longer the light carrier that God intended for me to be or that I want to be. It makes sense why Jesus says, I do not know you to the five bridesmaids. He's addressing the darkened part of each of our lives. Rather than a rejection, it is a call to find our inner light and let it shine. For you right now, what does that mean and look like? How much oil is in your lamp? And what are you doing about it? If you're a quart low, what's happening in the lamp of your life? Your light is needed by the world. In today's world, light is necessary for every person in every place. Your light makes a difference with your light of compassion, forgiveness, healing, love, hope, you can drive back the darkness. You already have the light of Christ in you. You are the light of the world. The Chicago Tribune ran a story about Betty Tucker, a Christian cook who works the night shift at Children's Memorial Hospital in Chicago. She's been doing her job for 43 years, 28 of them on the night shift. On that shift, she sees a steady stream of parents in her job, many of them frightened and weary. On the night that she was interviewed for the article, Miss Betty, as she is called by all who know her, served food to a mother whose three-year-old fell out of a second-story window that morning. Another mother whose 17-year-old was battling a rare form of leukemia. And a third mother whose 18-year-old had endured seven hours of brain surgery. Their stories break the heart of Miss Betty that's why she feeds every last one of them as if they had walked right into her own kitchen, so says one of her co-workers. 
another coworker, a member of the hospital's housekeeping crew, adds this thought about Miss Betty. You need someone to bring you life, and she brings it in the middle of the night. Miss Betty herself says, when I ask, how you doing today? And they say, it's not a good day. I say, don't lose hope. When the nurses tell me it's a bad night, I say, I understand it's a bad night. But guess what? I'm here for you. I'm going to get you through the night. There's a picture in the article which shows Betty sitting down, head bowed over a meal. I'm a praying lady, she says in the article. I pray every night for every room and every person in the hospital. I start with the basement and I go up floor by floor, room by room. I pray for the children. I pray for the families. I pray for the nurses and doctors. I say every night while I'm driving in on the expressway, oh Lord, I don't know what I'll face tonight, but I pray you'll guide me through. The reporter behind the article, Barbara Mahaney, offers these words about Miss Betty. Just might be that divine helping on the side is the most essential item on Miss Betty's menu. The one that she stirs in every broth and every whisper. The ingredient that makes her the perpetual light shining in the all-night kitchen. Today, Let's leave this place, face our darkness, and shine our light. Because it is God who said to let light shine out of darkness. Amen.
please stand as you are able as we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath, and our life as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people. Bring your salvation and center on us the hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through the meaningful worship and send us out with your justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power and rushing water and your beauty in the darkening night. Restore the creation, provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like the waters of all nations. Bless citizens with the wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray for the veterans in this community that they are supported and loved. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who have experienced homelessness or hunger. Support the under or unemployed and comfort any who are suffering this day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, for whom we listen, inspire the music ministry of our congregation. Fill our worship with songs to proclaim your greatness. Help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died now and live in you. Bring comfort and assurance of new life to all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer our unspoken prayers to those who are held in our hearts and trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace in any way that you're comfortable, especially if you see a new face. You may be seated.
Thank you so much. Beautiful. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> indeed holy, almighty and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and the blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord 